Τι πούσε. Okay, hello everyone. Good match, Julian. Yes, good luck to you, sir. So double two is a very good roll, so I want to do something good with this. I can hit, I think probably doing two good things is better than one by hitting. So I think I want to come up and is do I make the 11 point or, or come up to the 20? I think making the 11 point is good because that unstacks the mid, gives me a new point, and perhaps threatens to attack the, mid the 20 point next time. Okay, nice play. Did a little bit of everything. Um, <clears throat> So I can either lock up my 20 and come down. How does this play? Race is even. Means I don't get hit on your five point, which is a bonus. But it's not often wrong to make the five or four in these positions. I must have seen that sequence a thousand times. I still don't know how I play it. Okay, I'll just do this. Yeah, and in my experience, any any five point takes precedence over any four point. Oh yeah, good tip. So if you have a choice of fives, then you probably want to make the the offensive play. But uh, so that's a general rule. It's nothing to do with this position specifically. There might well yeah, be. There was a little bit too much threat on. Your five, I think. Yes, I mean, it was tempting to unstack two heavy points, but um, yes, the, the other thing is now I'm anchored at the twi on the 22 that you're, you're, you're not going to have a great priming game anyway. I've already got an advanced anchor of some sort. Right, make the bar obviously. So six three, I have a choice of running. So um, one thing encouraging me to run is I've got the, the worst anchor. So if we we just leave the position like this and keep playing on, then Gaz will probably get a, a better block in front of my anchor than I have in front of his. Um, usually I have two rules for running off an anchor, which is that you want to have a race lead. So if you get away with it, you're actually winning. And the other thing is that you want to have a stronger board than your opponent so that he can't take liberties and hit loose. So I think at the moment, just this, this long-term danger of being stuck on the three point is, is encouraging me to go. Yep, good play. Usually with a 6-3 or 5-4, if you can run, just just run. So now I'm delighted I've got out of there. And this seems to be a bit more diversification. There's really not that much difference to this, because this I get double one and double two. Yeah, so now the position sorted itself out a bit. So if I can escape my last back checker safely, then I'll have an advantage. But 
if Gaz can contain it or attack it, then he will get an advantage. So this is a tough decision whether I want to come up. Am I under more attack as if I come up? Coming to the edge of the prime is always dangerous. It's, it's giving more, me more escapes, but that's the point he definitely wants to make next. And the two, I think, is clear. And then with the one, I can either slot here or come up. So this gives him ones, threes, fours to hit. And if I stay back, I do still have sixes out. I'm not really under any pressure. Yes, I think I'm going to do this on the basis that at least if he points on me, it, it leaves a gap in his prime. Yeah, that was tricky. I would I would step up because I think because you're ahead in the race, that gives you more more. Yeah, chances. I'm I'm really not sure about that play. No, no. But um, the danger zone is the four point. That's where I want to hit next. So you don't really want to be there. Paid off. Got lucky on this one. I think if you you roll the number of points, it's it's even money which points you make. It's just too loose to make it now. I'll Try and make it next roll. No, this isn't the six I want. Well, I think I still want to keep your six blocked. So that would mean I play these three. And then I've got this coming up option again. And now the difference is your midpoint is stripped, but I don't think that's significant. So now you can point on me on the 22 and not give up any of your points. So maybe that's making the swing towards coming up now. Well, I think I'm going to still stay back. No, I stayed back last time, so I'm going to be consistent with nothing else. But I might well be consistently wrong. Yeah, I think that, that to me looks wrong. I mean, the seven isn't much of an upgrade to the eight there. No, no, I mean, I think three of the ones do, do nothing, basically. It's, it's what to do. We would have made the ten and then four to three, but we shall see. So yeah, I'm still not... Still not ahead enough to, to double this. I'm kind of halfway there on race position and threat. So pretty sure it's in the double. <coughs> now I've got two plays. I can make the two, which makes an inner ball point. But then that splits my prime and leaves it a bit stretched. My mid isn't hanging on to anything here. Um, usually you want to keep your mid, but it's not holding anything. And the 20 point can just stay and hold, hold my game from there, hope for a big double. This is just the most flexible play. I get to, I get a lot of numbers bearing on the four. Because I've got four blocks aiming at the four, I've got ten, eight, seven, and four. A little trick is you cube four to get sixteen. I know I have sixteen numbers to make the four point from here. Um, so the three point, it's three spares aiming at the three. So that's three cubes, nine. So that might not be exactly right, but it's. I think it works. I'm going to go for this because it's the most flexible play. Yeah, I like that play. I think the, this position, as far as you're concerned, is all about the three and the four points. So if you, you make the two, you're moving two checkers away from the points you want to make. So there's the six that I've been waiting for. Luck box. Well, I think it was unlucky. It took me three rolls to find it. <laughs> Normally I find them in one roll. Okay. I'm getting PR bets flinging in here. Right. Make the four, obviously. I'm not running. 
Okay, so now I have a position with an advantage, but I'm trailing in the race, so it's it's definitely no double. And I still have the point six away from the anchor. So I would like to be covering the two point block, but I can't seem to do that. And I can play in that leaves two blocks, that kind of tempts him to run, but maybe that shouldn't worry me. Or this, but I don't really want the two point instead of the four point. So I think I'll, I'll make the play that looks best and hope that he can't run against this. Yeah, these um, these are the kind of games you want to be aiming for at BMA. They're nice and easy to play, easy for PRs. Yes, so I mean, the, the computer might say I haven't chosen the absolute best play, but it's difficult to give away a lot of equity in these positions. Mm -hmm. So if you think you're playing really well one day and playing low PRs, probably because you're playing a lot of these kind of games. I make my points in order. Bot might actually like something like this because I know that Julian is not going to leave me a shot here. Six, two, three. So this is um, gives me more chance to make the points efficiently. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a brilliant play. I think that's going to be yeah, way ahead of, of anything else on account of the fact that you say that you you're in a good position to roll the prime forwards now. Yeah. yeah. So two one is a little awkward. I definitely can't leave any shots the way his, his board is now. Uh but Generally, if your opponent's got a five prime or a five point board, then you, you have to keep the shots down to an absolute minimum. So having said that, what, what happens if I do this? So we've got them leaving a seven, but one six is blocked, so we've got two fives for three. And if he hits it, then I've got twos and threes to hit him back in board. And ones and sixes to hit him on the other side. So maybe I can get away with four shots here. But it is great to make the four point for the long term. And maybe I'll get another blocking point next time. Well, I did say Julian wouldn't leave me a shot with any roll here, but obviously my play has induced a shot. Well, as I said, I didn't want to leave a shot. It's well played conveniently any other way. I wouldn't have done yeah. No, it was ugly to play it another way. So I want to make them in order. And then where do I play the two? Then this is kind of breaking up my prime. So it's like, I think it's just technically a little bit better to do this. I've got more chance of making the six prime now. Um, level in the race, still not enough to double. So three, one, again. Can I leave him a seven? I feel I've, I've got lucky in not being hit. If I leave him an eight, I don't have a three. So I think I just want to play completely safely. So that would be in this one. Three. The previous play paid off. Now I got the six prime. So four one is a good shot. I can organise something now. At least I can get this one well. I want it. Six and one, preserve a six, so I don't have to break the 20 next roll. 
So two, one, I've got to put my board back together. So this is the tempt and play, but then I, I never make the four point. And the four point is going to be good when I hit him and it's going to be good when he gets away and I get in a race. So making the four point is, is definitely right. And again, I can't leave any shots against the five foot board. So that was a double six, I'm guessing, yes. So six, one, can I leave any shots? It can't be right to leave shots against the six point board. Yeah, generally you don't want to leave an eight when clearing the mid, but I think there you could have got away with it because of the six, two and double two, but we shall see. Uh, don't want to break up my board in these positions. Um, trouble with playing this is that Julian's just going to play from the mid with most of his rolls, so I don't get a direct shot. I come out and it has a little duplication of ones. So I'm, I'm nearly always going to get a shot if I'm here. It's only sort of six, six, three, and one, three, double one, double four, you can lift. So I'm, I'm creating more contact and then that's his super rolls and then the medium ones, I just get more action. So things like Four, three, and four, two. He's just going to be forced to play inside, which will help me in the race. Can I talk myself out of this? You know, usually you want to hang on to your back anchor, but I also don't want to break my boards. Play big or go home, they say. No, I like this play, but um, you you generally find in, in games like this that as the game progresses, you gradually build up the strength of your board and it reaches a point where it's at a maximum. So if you don't go now, you start breaking your board and it gradually gets worse and worse. So you, if you have to go, now is the time to do it when you, you have your six-point board and any hit wins for you instantly. Mm-hmm. So five two is horrible. So I can't leave any shots. So this looks like the only base play. What am I hoping for here? Seven. Am I running with a seven? Not that one. I don't think. So I don't really mind about saving a six now. I'm probably going to run run with it. So I'll just play this better for the race. The three, two. Again, I can't leave any shots. So I, I tidy up my board. So if you can't get away cleanly, maybe I can pick a pass or something. Okay. So race position threat. A race is even. Julian's Got a little bit of wastage now, so I am ahead in the race. I'm probably what fifty-five percent in the race, maybe a bit more. Um, position is much better. There's not a lot of threat though because he hasn't got any blocks. Um, this score as well. I want to pick up a point. Julian's got a very low take point because he doesn't mind me going to three away. So remember from last week, four ways do a three away bad. So I double a little bit late in the, uh, five away, five away. Take a roll. Now that was, now you're running, so now we're clearly in a race. So. I guess I want to make two crossovers, so this will be six. Then I guess I come into the five point because I need to go to the five and the six eventually. So 
it does go to the five and make two crossovers. So like the previous row, I double a little bit later than for money because I want, just want to get a point against four way. I think his take points about 20% less than money. So using the 6-2 rule for races, if anyone doesn't know that, I'll post it in the chat in a minute. But it's um, the Walter Trice rule. So the pit counts over 62. So 64, I've, I've got to adjust it first. So Julian's got two wasted on the ace. So I'll add four for that. And he's got three extra crossovers, so half for each of those. So we're looking about six pip difference. So you take the leader's pip count, which is mine, 64, divided by 10, 6.4, round up to seven, and then add one is eight. And Julian's, that's his last point of take. Julian's is 65, add the adjustment of six is 71. So that means I'm one shy of his last point of take. It's pointing towards a double, actually. That's for money. I can double a little bit less. Double a little bit later. Let me just work that out again. <laughs> okay, I think it's a double. Challenge level acknowledged. Right, so I think this would probably be a tough decision for money, but at the score, as Gaz has correctly said, I have, have a low take point, but if I let him win one point, he gets to four away. And if he wins two points, then he, he gets to three away. So that doesn't worry me, I'm duly. And I guess I'm probably going to have quite a, a powerful recube when I get lucky. So I think that's indicating that I can still take here. So I can only make one crossover, and I definitely want something on six points when we're bearing off. This is obviously very good, being a lot of pips. So now the race is just about level with me on roll, but he's got lots more checkers off, and I've got a gap in five points, so it's not a double yet. So now we're getting down to a rolls position. I still need four rolls. He might be off in two, he's probably off in three. So I'm definitely waiting still. Now we're down to three rolls against two, so I can't double. And now I need double three or better. Yeah, it might have looked a little bit loose for me to double when the pit count is even, but because Julian has his men, a few of his men stacked up on the ace, it produces a lot of wastage, so we have to adjust the pit count. Yeah, and um, it turns out as the game went on, that's actually the, the problem I had. But I had all these checkers piled on the ace points, so I'd much rather have taken them off with two extra pips. Hmm. So even your big rolls sometimes don't play so well, right? They do that. Yeah, so this one I think might have come up last week. So um, although on an opening roll you you usually just stay on the 18 point, that's when your opponent has three on the, the eight point. So here he, he can hit with a one and still keep the spare on the eight point. 
and he's got nine in the zone rather than the usual eight, so he's in a better position to do blitzing. So the right play is just to, to get off that point. Yeah, good spot. No, lovely roll. So I'm hitting for sure. And then you're always looking to make inner ball points. Obviously, the four is better than the two. And then we look for the last four. Uh, if anyone's thinking of playing either the back ones, you'd be wrong. You have to, even though this strips the mid, you need to make points when you can. Yes, I mean, I have a general rule that if you're, you're trying to decide between plays, the one that makes the most points is, is usually a very good candidate. Mm -hmm. So if I come in with the five, I kind of invite an attack. But if I stay back, I'm really just asking him to prime me. So neither of them looks, looks particularly attractive. So uh, I'm behind in the race, so I should be looking to make some kind of attacking play. So I'm thinking maybe what if I come in with the one and then hit him? And this isn't so much to, to make the three point, it's the idea to take away half his role because if he makes the five point, then that's probably the end of the game. So the other play would be to come in here and invite the attack. But now he's got he's got eleven in the zone and I haven't made any points in board, so he's got blitzing alternatives as well as priming. So I think I've got to I've got to go back and despite the fact that I really want to come in on the twenty, I can't can't get away with it. Okay, I probably wouldn't have found that, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's right. So normally this would be an easy money cue because I'm ahead in everything, the race, position, and the threat. And now I've got to free away. It makes uh, cubing a bit tricky because the, the trouble with free away is once you've cubed, if you win a gammon, then you shoot over the score. So if I win a gammon, I'd go to six. So it's inefficient. Um, I can win an undouble double gammon and go to four. So it's, it's a very tricky score to play. I still don't double it as late as maybe three away, six six away, or three away, seven away. Um, but this is still too early to cube. Nice, easy one to play. The six one doesn't do much. I could make the two point, but that's behind his anchor, so that doesn't do much. I can come out to the six. That way, at least if he hits me, he's not making an inner board point. And it is good. He yeah, does have three strip points in front of me. There's still a, a blitzing threat here, but he has only two points in board so far. So the problem with this position is if I just do something feeble like this, then he, he's just got a threat of making a good prime against me. And, He's, he's not under, under any pressure to do it quickly because now he's got his grant anchor. He can just hope for a good roll to make a good point. Or if he doesn't, he'll just probably come down from the midpoint and hope for something better next time. So I've got to do something to disturb this position because it's a position that is naturally going to, going to end up in his winning if I don't do something in that direction. So the idea of this play is that I'm coming out, but I'm in front of three strip points. So Whatever he hits me with, he's going to be breaking the point to do it. And with the one, I could come up with the one, but so I'm attacking the strip eight point, but I think it's probably better to go to the two points. So when I enter with a bad six or a bad four from the bar, I could use the four or six to cover the blot. Okay, good play. Again, this would be an easy double for money. But for the score, wait. So it's always good to find yourself a few plays and then start. Eliminating them by logic. So I think I've got three plays here, so I can come down twice. 
these sixes from the bar, which is normally not what you want to do. The reason being because the six points not normally always there, so you don't want to give a, a, a good six for the other for the entrance. Um, there's the gammon play, clearly wins the most gammons, which would be correct when you really need a gammon. Like two away, four away, something like that. And there's the one I think wins the most games. Best DMP plays just to make the bar. So I'm starting to make a nice structure. I only leave three, six, five, four, and the, the ones that hit. Okay, so another plus with this play is that it, it duplicates the 5 4. So 5 4 is a good roll to make the anchor. So leaving that as a hitting roll, I'll probably turn down the hit if I get that. Yeah, you probably wouldn't hit with a 5 4, would you? So 1 4, I have to come in and I might as well save this plot. Okay, so even though I'm at that tricky three away score, I still want to win this match. Uh, I think this is going to be a tricky decision for Julian. So lots of good numbers to make the five or just come down, make the nine. I'll easily miss my market if I roll a big double or four, one, three, one, double one. So I think this is a double now. I think this is this is a good cube. I think previously you were right to wait because you always had some some gammon chances, but now I've, I'm anchored on the twenty four point. Your gammons have gone down, but conversely, your your wins will have gone up because um, I'm not threatened to make an advance anchor or to escape or anything. I'm basically stuck back on the one point and seeing if I can win from there. So race is very bad. But the gap on the five points you have is serious. Um, so you won't want to give up the bar to make it. So you've got one, three, four to make it. But the other thing in, in, that, that I don't like about your position is you haven't unstacked the six at all. So um, even if you make it with three, four, it doesn't look so great for you. So the, one of the problems of this score is that I I don't want to pass unless it gets two away. Um, but on the other hand, I don't want to take and let him get to Crawford when he wins. So I've kind of got two two bad options I don't like. But I'm going to go for the I'm going to go take this one, I think, because because of this problem, he's still got the gap on the five point and he hasn't done second six. I've, I've kind of half lured him off the midpoint, so maybe I'll get some play against his two checkers on the 20 point when he tries to come out. So I'm going to have a look at this. Okay. <clears throat> so again, let's look for some options and then find the best one by deduction. So this one Plays that horrible six to four, seven to four. I hate these the six to four play because it you very rarely end up making your five points. It, it puts a builder behind it. It's that or make the point. Uh -huh. Hoping it's obvious to everyone that you should make your point here. Unstack the six point. Yeah, that's that's clear. I think that it's. It's another point in your prime, so you've got five points out of six now. So when you, you get a good number, you're up to six out of six. Um, getting hit is, is far from fatal for you here. Mm -hmm. um, as I said before, part of the reason I took was because you haven't unstacked the six, and you've done some of that now. So double three is definitely a very good roll. So this is half of it, and... I can try coming here. It looks quite pretty, but I think I need to strengthen my board here, which is going to give me some chances when he comes off his anchor and maybe some more chances 
split. So one snap from the six, making another point and board, I think it's clear. Good play. Just have a brief look at this, just looking for an alternative to 13 8. Obviously, this, this, this is wrong, leaving a double shot. Um, this could be right, and if that's your style, then that's what that's what you're thinking to play, then fine. But it's not my style. I don't like 6 to 4. As previously mentioned, I want to make the five point. I need to keep the checkers in front of the five point. Yeah, so that one, I think this is the first time I've disagreed with your play, that um, the problem with this play is you have two builders to make the five point, the ones and threes, and the other way gave you three builders, one, three, five. Yeah. And especially if you look at the, bot the the other side of the board, that I've got your threes and fives blocked, so they're potentially bad numbers. So now I think a lot of your fives are, are going to play badly when they, they might well have done better the other way. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Oh, lesson learnt there, if that's correct, because I don't normally crunch numbers, but yeah, that is a good point. I was thinking the big numbers I'm going to run anyway. Okay, so 6-3, I don't want to leave any shots, so I'm still hoping that he won't make the five or he'll have problems coming up the bank. Yeah, big numbers I'm going to run, maybe not this one. It's just too loose to fight, do any running plays here. Julian's going to hit with everything if he can. So I'll just hold on to the back anchor for a bit. Um, notice that if Julian hits from the 24 here, then he's going to break his anchor and get a lot of return shots. So double three. Still can't move the back kick. So I'm pretty sure this is three of them. And the question is what to do with the fourth. So obviously this makes another blocking point, which will give him more numbers where he's stuck, but it does leave my blot on the fourth point. So this way, he can escape with more numbers, but if he only escapes with one, I'm in a better position to attack the remaining one. So I'm not sure about this. So what does this actually block? So it's blocking two, so two, five. Would he run with two, five anyway? Probably not. And two, three. And it doesn't look as though it blocks anything very much. What is that? At least I'm in a better position to hit, or if I run out for my anchor, I've got the strong board now. So I'm going to settle for the strong board. Yeah, good play. So if Julian had left three stripped points, then the, we call that TMP, too many points. And the fact that he's now made a point in board gives him more freedom to attack if I did come off. Luckily, I've rolled a number. I can still... Can, um, maintain some a board and structure. Mm, this looks like a little bit of a cheeky one here. So that's um, obviously very good for free to, as opposed to just double free on the other way. It will help to preserve the seven for longer as well. I don't want to break that and let him come out with sixes. So next roll, if I'm assuming Julian's just going to use his bear on the 10, unless he had to roll something better, like four, five, four, 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 six. I'm going to have to break the seven or the eight. Oh, not sure. Hmm. 
No. Yeah, I think I like the other one. Um, <laughs> and the reason is now, now you've made the two point that the eight point isn't part of your prime anymore. So you're, you're really trying to make your, a seven point prime by keeping the eight point. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the difference is what you want to do next time is you want to break the break the point at the back and get a spare on the six that you really, yeah. really like to have a spare on the six. And if you break the eight now, you get ones and twos get you a spare on the six. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my thing. But of course, you, you're paying four three is a very big price when it comes up. Yeah, I think what swayed me in the end is the, or if I end up breaking, I don't want to have any more blocks lying around. No, no. Okay, so sure. four two. So I can split now, but I'm not sure this is really the time to do it. Let's have a look at the split. So this leaves him twos and threes to hit on the five point, sixes to hit on the one point and twos. So that's two, three, six. There's no last point to you hit. And what do the bad numbers do? So the threes. The points I've got blocked on the other side of the board, one, three, five. The threes he can certainly hit with, but what happens with fives? So when he rolls something with five, does that do him any serious damage? So that's that's not too bad that way. So the two other plays, and I'll just run past him. Maybe I don't need to split now because he's not not doesn't really have a great threat to make the five point yet. The problem with this play is uh, I've got threes and fives to hit, I guess it's good. Or well, the other alternative is this way. So this is following this, this thing I mentioned as far as Gaz's position was concerned, was the eight point isn't part of my prime now, I've got the two points. This is very flexible. And I still have two builders to hit him. I'm letting him out with threes now. So this way, what's the three five? Three three is going to be good anyway. Three five, probably for him. I really like how he's trapped with that. So five one is no swing. So maybe I still want to keep this flexible so that sometimes we get enthusiastic and think everything's going to happen on the next roll. And to have everything perfect for that, but quite often nothing happens for a while, and that you you want to make a play that's good two or three moves down the line. So this seems to leave me with lots of spare checkers to play next time if nothing happens. Okay, I, I think I think that was um, that was that was wrong. I think um, I would have played. I would have split there just because it's not that much threat on the twenty. I, I do take your point about over enthusiasm. No, I mean it, it could be wrong. I mean, it's, uh, I've had lots of these tough splitting decisions in this game. Okay, this is obvious. Can't just play this because Julian's now bought himself a bit of time. So. Um, uh, doing a little mini roll out of the play, then he'll use his spares, and then I'll have to come off the 20 next roll anyway. So, 6 4 is one of the best rolls to come off with now because it only leaves um, a one. Yeah, exactly. So, that you have a good lead in the race. So, if we just hold the position, you're probably going to have to break your anchor before I break mine. And as you say, when you break it, this is the ideal role to do it with, with, with minimum shots and only one block exposed. So we haven't hit, which we expected, and we weren't able to. So I've got to be careful not to get hit by double four here. So. Makes the one. Well, that's no shots. Is there any point in playing the other one? So that's six, four, two shots. But it gives me more chance to make five, obviously. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'd, I'd have been tempted to leave the double four. I might be wrong, but double four is definitely going to be a very good shot for me if I get it. So, Does it buy you anything? Not sure. No, four, one. So I'm, I'm not splitting here because I'm not ahead in the race anymore. I do want to make the five point. That's the, the next thing I need to do to win this game. And if you think back to when I took it, I said there were two two main reasons why I took taking because he had his six points still stacked and he hadn't made the five. And as the game has gone on, he's done stack the six, but the five has still got a hole in it. So there's there's still some hope here. So if I played that cheeky one earlier, I could have made my five now. The safe play is this. And then it's loading up the seven, which I don't really want to do. I want to prepare to clear that. This is quite tricky. Oh, I can just leave the double four now. I think that's a nice compromise. That's um, four shots. It's just one. Yeah, I think again, this, this, this looks good because if I roll double four, it, it's a great roll for me. And maybe if I hit you, you're, you're going to come back and hit me and say, well, you, you've won on that exchange. There's six, one. There's only one six. Now I just want to make the five points hope to get somewhere next time. Not really much point me making a nine. It's only good for double four, or four, three, double two. I'm going to have to break it next roll anyway, so I'll buy myself a little bit of flexibility. Could have left it, I guess, and cleared the eight. That's probably better, actually, in hindsight. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking after you did it, that you... You could have cleared the eight to still leave the double four, but then you have you have three builders for the five mm -hmm. rather than two. Yeah, much better actually. Right, so five two is horrible. So now I've got to break this board. I work so hard to construct. Um, so do I want to leave the check on the six or if I save it? I've killed all my fives, but then I'm compelled to come up with a four. So maybe have to come up with a four. This is the other play, which is worse for the race, and keeps the bad five. I think I'm going to come off the six completely and try to kill the fives. So the race is still not good, but the five point is still open. So only one legal play here. Okay, I'm coming in, and then. Taking two off is just going to leave me a lot of a lot more bad rolls. I don't need to crunch the numbers. It's just this one. It just looks safer. I guess for now, clearing doesn't leave that many bad numbers initially, but long term it'll be worse. Yeah, I'm not, not sure about that play. Um, when I say I'm not sure, I mean I'm not sure. The um, problem with this play is you haven't got any off. And <laughs> my my board is far from perfect. So um, there's there's going to be life for you after, you after your hit, if you've got some off. And <laughs> the other thing is I'm, I'm getting a bit short of time. So maybe if you leave a shot later, the case that I might well have gone by then. Yeah. So, as I say, not entirely sure. Yeah, it had, um, you're right, it had less worst uh, rolls initially. So now I think I'm not going to get gammoned, but I definitely want to hang around at the back so I can stay out with that checker and make the one point, and that way I can play a six or five from the back next time. So I would have had a bad five free anyway, so... yes. Yes. That's pretty obvious to me. Leave one yeah, so in, interestingly, if you had made the five point, then the five three plays safely. So the, 
the gap on the side of point has, has finally paid off for me that I've got a shot. So now maybe, I just have to save the gallon, so I don't want to waste any pips going deep in my board. Maybe in a more desperate match score, you might have even had a recube there, but not, not here today. So now I'm really looking at miracles, and I'm thinking maybe this is a good play that gives me one other double to make get four crossovers. And two and four will form two. This way gets me some more doubles. So I'm really in this position, just counting on rolling doubles somewhere along the line. Okay, so now let's look at the score. So Gaz is four foot five away. So winning a gammon is worthless to me, or nearly worthless. It, it takes away his free drop. Um, so I should primarily be concentrating on just winning the game. So it's effectively a, a DMP strategy for me. So four yeah, for me, but I don't want to get back No, so I, I could have mentioned the back gammons, but I think we're probably quite away from those at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't see a good play with this immediately, but it uh, doesn't seem to do anything constructive. But if I try and create any builders coming down from the midpoint, then it's going to be an enormous quantity of indirects to hit. So much as I'm happy with the back position, I think I'm, I've just got to pretend that I like the role and try and get into a race. Now this is the, the least bad as far as I'm concerned. If I stayed on the three point, he'd pointed on me. Or if I came down from the midpoint, he'd have hit an indirect. So it, although it's bad, it, it could have been worse. Yeah, I would have won there as well. The, the, my least favourite roles, those ones you're not really sure what to do. I wouldn't have hit on the do so. So I've got a free to hit here. I need I need to hit, otherwise I'm letting Julian have a free roll at making some inner ball points or hitting. So it, I just leave the position as a 50-50 position where I want, to, I want to gain an advantage. So I do that by hitting. And then the double hit on the the ace is a is a good play for winning gammons, but I'm looking to just win one point here, obviously, at 4 0. So I'm looking for another five. I don't like stripping the mid, I like to keep spares on the mid. So it's just out. If in doubt, come out. Yeah, so um agree entirely with you. So as you say, the, the hitting on the one point is going to win lots of gammons, but they're they're worthless to you at this score. So four six four comes in and hits, and it's usually right to, to send one back to furthest. So there's two bonuses here is that I, it helps a lot in the race. And it also takes away an attacker. So if I if I hit on the other side of the board, then he's he's fighting for the four points. So I've I've stopped his attack as well as gaining in the race. And now, for some reason, the smoke has cleared, and despite the fact that I hit him, I'm still behind in the race. So, <coughs> I can play safely here, but I don't think playing safely is what I want to be doing because I'm behind in the race. So, just playing safely is just going to ensure I stay behind in the race. So, I think it's it's a natural unstacking play and making points. And if he hits me with the three, it doesn't worry me too much. Good play. So 
So now he's he's got an advantage because of his advanced anchor, but he's he hasn't made any other points, so it's difficult for him to improve in this position. I'm kind of thinking that I just want to do nothing for the moment and hope that he exposes block somewhere. So I think this is the two. And then I can come down with slot the three. And I think slotting the three is not the point I want. I think I want the five point next. So I'm just going to play this and hope he rolls a six X that leaves a shot. So I can either play 13 6 or 13 11. Don't really mind stripping the mid now. Don't really mind losing it if it makes some decent points. It's not holding anything. Now I've got the 18 point. A little bit rigid, but this doesn't really buy me anything. Well, obviously good for four one and six one things like that. But now Julian's split it leaves a lot of numbers to hit. Three six five four six four six shots. Slightly more flexible. So no, six four was a hit. Yes, I just would say that Gaz is a good enough player that he didn't look at clearing the 18 points last time. So that's mm -hmm. just a problem for him that he, he's going to have difficulty getting off there at the moment. But at the moment, it's an insurance policy. So if he gets hit, then he can come in and come out to there. So he's, he's quite right to say that he actually wants to try and make a, an attacking point before he makes the move forwards. Yeah, if I was sort of 20, 30 pips up, then I'd look to do the pay now, play. So now things are going well for me. So I've got a good race lead. What I'm aiming to do is just come home safely. So I need to find a, a way to do that. And I think getting one of my checkers safe is a very good start. I could try coming out all the way. That leaves me twos and threes to hit. When he gets one of those, he breaks the midpoint. And I've got the four and six point made, so any four or any six can't hit anywhere. But maybe this is a good idea of trying to do everything in one at once. Or the alternative is maybe to do this. Well, that gets at least gets one guy safe. It does leave him the ones to hit, which are actually very good hits. The six is hitting don't like too much. But as I say, at least I've got one safe. Maybe I don't mind having two two boots. He hasn't got a board. If he does come in and hit me, it's far, far from the end of the world. Okay, so let's try and get them both out of the safe at the same time. I think maybe you make a three there though. Can I come out? If I come out, then I'm 15 pips behind. It's going to be really easy for Julian to bring bring it home from there. So the two is really deep. But there's not a lot better to do. So two, three, that's brilliant. It saves everything. I don't mind losing the mid here. There's a, there's a better play, I think, just to make the point and slot another one. Okay, so now everything seems to be going smoothly. So the hardest point I've got to clear is the midpoint here. So if I can get rid of that one, that's very good. And then play the last one here. Good play. So I'm too far behind in the race to run now. So five, three, I can make the three point or the one point. Let's have a look at the three point. It's a nice landing spot, but 
the advantage of hitting him is it drives him forward. Maybe if he comes in with a five, that would be nice for me because then I'd have plenty of room to play behind him. So I'm going to try and try and push him forwards with this way. Good play, that's the idea there. But don't if you don't start hitting me off the eight, then I'm just gonna be there as an annoyance playing my naked ace point game. Yeah, and the other nice thing about it is that it's um it stops you stops you developing so easily that you have to use some of your role to, to come in. Yeah. So now if we were playing over the board, I could try hitting him or making the five point, but the computer doesn't let me make illegal plays. So this is one, two, and then I can try clearing back point maybe, which is one good idea, but I'm a bit short of spares here. So the other play would be, I guess, clearing the eight point. Nothing better than that. Clearing the eight point this way, so how safe is that? Doesn't really look too safe, but lots of gaps in my position and not many landing spots. Look at the other one again, looks bad here. So, pick this land on him, so that's not good. Six three, so actually, some of the quite good. Three points on him, six five points on him, six six points on him. Uh, six one, I can just play safely behind. Six two, I can pick a pass. And what is that? Six four, I guess I play with the eight point. Yeah, so I've got rid of the back point, which I guess is what I was hoping to do last roll. Yeah, I think that was definitely right. So I could still afford to stay back. I'm running here. Probably only got about 10% in a race, so just more chance to win staying back. So I make the four, slot the three. So three, two. I can pick and pass and try and drive you forward, but that's losing a spare from the six point. So this way I get one extra spare to point on you. So six three does point on you as advertised. Six three, don't want any heroics hitting. So again, I just want to strip the back point and then clear it next time. So running, I'm still 20 pips down, still the same dilemma, so. Run with one gives him a lot of um, good small numbers just to pick and pass. So it's actually more chance for me to run both to get to get a shot. Just mm. five again. I just want to clear the back point whenever I can. I'm not worried about gammon, so I'll just well, oh, I got my shot. I missed it. Yeah, well, I missed my shot last game, so it's only fair. That's fair. <laughs> so that 5 2 turned out to be quite costly. Would you have left the lot on the 11 there? Yes, yeah, I just it. it it turned out, as, as you say, it was costly, but it, it was a perfect sequence for me that I hit, mm -hmm. and then you banned, which is yeah. well above average. Okay, so six, I was looking for anything fancy, but six comes off, and then two comes off. And now the gap on the two point means that when I roll a two, I can play four to two and fill it, so it's not a permanent gap. So Julian goes to four one four way. So if he doubles the next roll, then he can he can win the the match with a gammon, or he has to win another game. So it wouldn't have been any difference to lose one or two points here. If he lost two, 
then the best case scenario would be this, exactly the same thing. You'd have to win a gammon with the cube turned or two more games. So yeah, make... the only difference is that you've got the free drop this way. Yeah. Okay, so now he has this free drop. What that means is that I, I need a doubled gammon to win the match. And if he passes, the, the scores effectively is the same. So um, he, he has this option to pass any position that he thinks he's, he's not better than 50-50 in. So what that means is that I need to cube him now and not let him have a free look to see whether he wants to be passing next turn if I've rolled my double six. So I have to cube him now before he's seen my double six. So this is this is the free drop position. So um, I can let this one go. Let Julian get to two, and he still needs to win two games or a double gallon to win the match. Um, because I've rolled first and I'm slightly ahead, then then I can take this. Um, if if Julian had won a gallon the roll before and it was um, four two, it would be the opposite of a free take. It would be a, a mandatory take. I'd have to take it. So this is uh, this the free drop. If it was four yeah, so two, the mandatory. Definitely a take for you, as you say, because you you had opening roll, and you rolled quite a big roll. So if nothing changes, you're you're doing well in the race. I think with the six four, I think I know I would play your play because I'm just much more comfortable with it. But I think at this particular score, the computer actually likes running all the way to the four two. Yeah on the basis that it, it just cuts the gammon losses down for you. Yeah, I often miss the wrong opening plays at least. Like I say, I, I'm, I will play the same same as you on the basis that at least I understand this game. Um, so six hitting is clear, and with the four, I have a choice. I can split or come down from the midpoint. Normally, I would do the split here, but because of the score, there's some temptation to come down from the midpoint get another attacker in the zone. Um, but one of the other factors you tend to overrate is that when you're at Gammon Go, they tend to think that the, the Gammon price is infinity and the Gammon price is only one. So I, I still want to concentrate on winning the game as well as getting the Gammon. So I think I can do the, the natural play, which is the hit and split. So Against Gaz's formation, if I don't hit, he's threatening to make a strong point, so I'd like to split uh, to, because of his, his making a new point, but usually it's too dangerous. But if I can combine that with a hit, then he needs to roll a double to point on me anyway. Yeah, usually you hit and split there. So this is the normal kind of play I'd make for the bar I'm, I'm fret I want to threaten to make my five point um the rare times that he misses and I can make it because of the score now I'm gammon saved I'm just gonna lock up the back anchor. Yeah that's that's a great play. And um making an, an advanced anchor is going to cut down your gammon losses which is is very important at this score. And there's an extra bit that you're you're leaving a four shot, which is duplicated by making the 20 points. So fours are going to be good for me, no matter what you play. So having said that, that I haven't, haven't rolled four and I can't make the bar point. Now, I think my two is going to be here because I do want the five points. And this way, at least if you hit me there, you've got to break your anchor. So staying on the 20 points really invites you to attack me, so I think I'm just going to come off there now. Okay, I've got a hit. And then it's a question of what's the best six. So I call that the danger zone on the 20 point. I don't really want to be there because Julian's just going to 
keep hitting there. That's the point he wants to make. Um, normally, you're ahead in the race and you want to clear from the rear. It's just, it's just too much action. They're the points he wants to hit. So I'm just going to do 20 to 14. This feels a little bit safer. Yeah, that's certainly better. It takes away my good 60s. I wasn't sure you should be hitting there, but um, as I say, hitting is definitely going to win most games, but giving up the anchor is, is dangerous at the score. So uh, I certainly have looked at just making the, the seven points. And yeah, it could have made the bar, actually. So four, six. I'm a little worried with this, this natural play that makes the point that it, it looks like it's just walking into a, a game I'm losing. So I'm trailing in race and the, uh, he might make an attacking point or just save his block and threaten to get into a race. But I really can't find anything else here. I can't see another good stick. So any of the other sticks that just seem to leave him so many numbers that are good for hitting. I guess this is the other play, that the natural play that I'm attacking. So this is leaving three to hit outside, twos, fours, fives to hit inside, fours to hit outside, fours to hit at seven. So what have we got? Two, two, three, four, five hitting. So one and six don't do anything. So maybe, as I was thinking, it's just this. I hope that he can't get home safely. Oh, I'd like to get the Batman going, but it doesn't really go anywhere, so just tidy up a bit. The double two is a great number, so now I can actually start putting some pressure on the back tracker. So this, this is the best play for keeping it stuck there for one roll, but not for keeping it stuck there for a long time. So I think making the four points and setting the six is better than this, stopping him running for one roll. He doesn't need to run on roll one. He can quite happily make points on the other side of the board. Six free is a run. Okay, so now the good news is that I've caught up in the race an awful lot. So I'll definitely have the five points. That's part of my game winning plan, whatever it might be. So now I can make the two point or clear one of the outfield points. Maybe the two point. I keep, don't want to keep too many checkers tied up in these outfield points. So it's really a question as to which one to clear. And despite the fact this looks the natural play because we're so used to having the midpoint, I think it's actually better to keep that point because it's, it's more contact than we get at the midpoint. But it also gives me, it makes it easier for me to get safe with nines. And if I go past with 10 or 11, I don't mind so much. So I've got two plays, 13 to six, obviously no shots. Or I make the four and that only leaves double two, double four and six two. Four shots. Got a feeling it wins more games. It definitely loses more gammons. Well, it might not lose more gammons because I might end up leave, leaving worse shots if I play this. Make the four. Yeah, I think that's that's a close decision, but I think you're right. That uh, you're the one stacking the six. You're making a point in board. Okay, so three one bad shot doesn't do anything. I can can slot the three, but then I don't really have a good cover good cover for it. Um, so I'm thinking I just do nothing here and keep my board pure. My my main plan is to run the back checker out now or uh, hit a shot if something turns up. So now I don't actually need to leave a shot. I know I said in the earlier games that I hate playing to the four point when the five point isn't made, but I think this is flexible enough and the hit could be really costly. Yeah, I agree entirely there, but um, last time there was a good reason to leave the block, but 
if you were making the four point, but here you're not making the new point by leaving it there. Okay, so double three, I still can't run the back checker, so I guess I just want to make the next possible good point I can. Six three, load up the four again. This is what happens, you never make the five. And three two, I can make an attempt to come up now, but I'm not convinced that's a good idea. It does let him play safely behind me. So I'm just going to concentrate on strengthening my board again. So hopefully if I get a shot, then there might actually be some difficult. <clears throat> so I'd like just to bring everything home now. I don't, I'm ahead in the race, I don't have to hit the basically have to leave a shot so it's better to leave a shot on the bar and there's, and there's less hitting numbers you could do something like this it's a bit like the previous game um, when Julian had the 5-3 that while he's there on the 24 it's just a pest you, it's better to hit when you have a chance Oh dear. Yeah, you know, the other play was just point on the one and then play two down from the mid. Yeah, I didn't um, see that. So that clears the mid, but I mean, it still leaves the same shots. You still get hit by five, three. Um, so I definitely have to hit. And this looks as though it doesn't cover. So I can't go with three, five, or eight, so it doesn't cover. So, um, can't save it, can't do anything fancy. So, two plays. This one gives me another one to cover next time, but there's two blocks there. Now, the play is to make the seven, which is what I'm going to go for. So, the, the three that hits outside is duplicated with the three that in, hits inside. And the seven point is a very good point because now I'm threatening ones or twos that if he stays on the bar, I can actually make a six prime and win the game. Good play. Yeah. Can afford to play really aggressively from behind normally. Yeah, yeah. So as, as you say, that getting gammon doesn't cost me anything. Yeah. So four is obvious because I just far fewer shots than playing. Six to two. Right, so I've come in and hit. So which which one to hit? So normally hitting outside would be the move that would tempt me because then I I know I've got two checkers sent back and the, um, it's a lot harder for him to get out from there. But if you look at it the other way, you can say well he can he can save the gammon if he makes the three point and. If I send a checker back, he can make the three points. If I hit him on the three, then um, he can't anchor on the three next time. But I suppose he can hit all my blocks. So I guess I'm going to hit another guy. At least that way, like I say, I think I'm going to get lots of wins out of that, which will, will tempt me even if it's not gammon. So let's send another checker back. Uh, another score I might look to come out. This might be right for DMP, but I just can't afford the gammon losses. So I'm just going to have to dump it. I never like to do, but. Yeah, you just got to hope for we'll better next time. Um, no double two. Can't save both the blocks, can save one of them. Doesn't seem to be a lot else to do. Nice, yeah, it would have been nice to duplicate twos, but you ran out of twos. Four is an obvious hit. Oh, gosh. So I think I'm discounting this. Just leaving more shots from the bar. 
got a funny feeling if I don't come out now, then um, it's going to be worse for my gambling losses. It's just not going to play well. So if I come out now, I'm kind of gambling on a dance or a non-hit. Some of the hits are duplicated. Oh, look, it's very loose. Maybe it is down. I'm not sure. There's a hit, but the positive bit for you is that you still have the anchor, so you might well get off the gammon anyway. Yeah. So three, four, I can try and disengage, but maybe I'm not too worried about being hit. Um, so the problem is if I don't don't move the back check, well, what else do I do? So if I play this four, I'd like to stay back there because I, I want to have a shot at you when you come out with some things like five, one and six, one. So then that would mean going in, but that guy, I, I'm really hoping that guy is going to end up on the six point. I don't want to move him off there. So how about if I do come out, what do I want to leave? Um, so if I go here, I leave six, five. The other way, I leave six, four, double five. I probably want to be hit with double five. So this does let him play safe. So, okay, we know this is the four. So is there going to be any advantage in my staying back? I guess I might hit him on the six point. Mm -hmm. I think I should be looking for lots of contact here. Maybe I can slot one. No, I'm just going to come in. So do I come out? Not fatal if I get hit with a four because I've got the anchor, I can still come back in. Race is quite close. I think I'm just going to hope for a five or six next roll and a better one. Okay, so five, one is pretty useless. You do still have a four point board, so that stops me being a bit too aggressive with the position. Uh, I don't want to do this because this just gives me a free range to walk into the outfield and every, how everything wants. So that means I have to play this five and look for a one. So if I come up, I leave him tens and elevens. If I stay back, I leave him twelves and nines. So this is five, four, six, three winners and the other way. Six five six four. So it looks about the same. So let's leave one back all the way. So six four and six five. Tidy up. So he's still got a four point board. That's the race like the race is okay for me now. So maybe I can just check it out and win a race if I need to. So now I'm just going to say 12 away from him and start building up my board. So now I've broken his board. Now I'm much more confident with the position. I can risk being hit and do nasty things to him. Six out. I'll just go for the least hits. Get a bit closer. Yeah, so that looks clear. So now, now there's obviously this safe play, which really just lets me run home. Or I can try and get fancy with the position. So does this really gain on anything? 
I'm not sure what he's going to do with this play is check with the outfield home and then I've got to move next time. So then maybe I'll get a shot at him. But I think at the moment I'm still still keen to get involved in some hitting, but there's going to be more gammons for both sides, which is good for me. And I do have the stronger board. I get a hit. It's just too too many gammon losses to, to hit. It's not even a good four, is there? I'm just praying for the race here. I can play in. It doesn't really achieve much and then means I'm breaking with sixes again. So better for the race, I guess. In or lift. So five one. So this is a good shot. So now I can can come round without leaving a direct. I can leave a direct if I want to. So maybe this is five. Now I can come up. So what will happen is six is so six one he can hit and save six two take four six. Three he saves, six four he saves, six five he saves. So maybe it's not worth that. So five and one. So I guess getting hit by a seven doesn't worry me at all. So I guess I'm going to gain a bit on some of his five one, five two, six one. Tidy on my blocks. So now it doesn't look as though my dreams of gamma are going to come to fruition. So I'll keep two builders on him anyway in case. So double four, difficult game for me to lose. So I think I've got to see if I can get any sort of gamma chances here. Six out and stay back for more shots. So four, three takes none off. So I can play safe or hit. So hitting is going to win more gammons for three some games. So how many have I got off here? Uh, three. Doesn't look as though there's going to be many gammons anyway. So let's just leave nothing and hope it comes to good next time. Stay for the shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I come up, that's 11 shots. If I stay back, it's 14 yeah. shots. If I get an extra one off, which might well mean I win when I'm hit. Maybe there's some more fluke gammons when, when I get hit. Five. Is going to give me a sporting chance if I'm hit. Okay, sorry, a bit distracted now. Oh, I've got, got eight left, so there's a miracle chance of winning a gammon. Okay, so we've cleared the first hurdle, the post court, but he's still got his free drop, which he might use later. So just make the normal best play and then see what he thinks when I double him. So just make sure I definitely want to double him. Yes, I don't want to give him a free look as like last time. So 6 1 is a great roll. Um... I just know from experience, I think I'm slightly behind with Julian being 
on roll and having made a point. So I just let this one go. Free pass and just play DMP. Yes, yeah, so I think you're spot on. We both rolled well making eight points, so it's it's my turn to play. So you I think you're you're clear to be underdog. Okay, so now we are a clear DMP. So six is clear, sometimes 13 eight is right, but don't think so when I've already got a spare on the eight point. So I can make the two, I can do the split play, which is um, usually correct for most openings and um, replies, but I think because I'm slightly ahead in the race, I'm just going to go for the run. Okay, so two one is a hit, it's brilliant, so two is good. Do I want to come up with a one? Am I really blocking myself or getting to be a target? I'd rather leave it back, leave the spare back on the 11th. I think coming up to two is, is counterproductive even more because it, it means that I'm now blocked by an eight point in terms of escaping. So I'm just settle for this one. Great roll. So in with one. making the four point looks best and then so stepping up to the danger zone just leaves Julian too many good numbers to make the points he wants so I'll just bring another builder down. Right so double one is good we're, we're learning as this game goes on that we both both of us love doubles um, so he's got the stronger board so this sort of super aggressive play is probably wrong I don't want to get into a hitting contest. I might have a little more time to consolidate my position, so maybe I just switch like this. So that puts him on the bar, gives me a new point. There can't be much wrong with that. Yeah, good play. So if I just come in on the ace, I'll, I'll risk being stranded there. So Julian's threatening to make a priming position, so I'll I'm split into his priming position, then there's a question of a one. I just think it's better to come up to the 22. I can make it or threaten to come out from there. So two, one, not a great roll, but not terrible. So I think I just make another point here. Usually I have a simplistic view about backgammon that is, I tell people it's like being an accountant, it's about assets and liabilities. So. It's where you, you hit your opponent is good, but you've now got two liabilities, the plots and the three and the 10. Whereas the other way you've got, a, got an asset. You can go to the bank manager on Monday morning and say, look, I had all these good points, it just didn't work out. Yeah, good play. Wow, what a great role for me. So I well wish I hit now. A wise man once told me that big doubles you should look to blitz with. Anyone remembers the UK Open last year? But usually for DMP, you want to play priming games. They win more games than blitzes, less gammons. We don't need a gammon, so I'm just going to swing one round and make the bar. Looks obvious. Right, so now now I'm getting a bit scared about him just making the five point. I'm way behind in the race. So now I'm kind of in panic mode. If I could make the five or the bar, that would, that would be good. I think I might be able to counter prime him. But now I, I fear if I just give him a good roll, he'll make the five point. And then if I make a point, that he's, he's winning the priming battle as well. So I think I've got to hit him here because I'm, I'm down in the race. So I'm not not risking my racing advantage and choose what to do with the two so I can come down, get another checker into play, or putting a spare on the six is almost always good and that gives me some direct covers for the one point. In with a five and look for a good four. 
I know I'm delighted I hit because otherwise he'd have made the five point with his roll. So however bad it is here, it would have been a lot worse the other way. I could stack up on the six or swap the five, but both of them look wrong. So if if, if in doubt, come out. So three two doesn't hit. No. Usually I would just routinely make the one point, but I'm thinking here that the DMP is usually right to play purely, but you want something that you don't really just want to be relying on your phone staying on the bar for a week when you hit him. So I feel like I do want to make the five point. I can come down and leave him twos to hit, but twos are kind of a bonus number. He's got one, four, five to to save to make the five point three, five, six save his block. So I'm now just giving him the twos. So I think I just go here. Swing this one round. How he leaves five four. Six five. I can't get out, but I can make the five point what I was hoping to do. Now I guess the bar point is back at my prime to make me. Aha. Uh -huh. Tricky one. Obviously you'd like to make the five or the eight. They all look tidy but leave direct shots. Um, safe play is to the three. Leaves nothing, and then I could hopefully come down off the mid next roll with most numbers. Excuse the background noise. This is dog's having his evening scratch. So I could lose the mid now. What does it leave? Six, one, four, three, four, five, four, six. Eight numbers. It's just too many. Pretty much locks up the win. Julian misses. No, it's too many shots. So double one. This that didn't make the other play. If I'm going to roll double one. Um, I think thinking I like his play actually because the other play is it's easy to quantify if he leaves eight shots and he, he says, well, okay, if I have nine shots, they all won, that would be 25%. Um, so that, that would be slightly under 25% of hit. But here, I think he, he can just choose whether to take a risk or not because he's just got his big race lead to fall back on if needs be. So the big question I have to ask is do I want to come up with a one? I guess I want to make the bar point with three of them and then decide if I want to come up or play six to five. I guess if I'm losing the race, then I'm, I don't want to come up. I don't really want to say, okay, I'm threatening to escape with a six and lose the race. So perhaps if I stay back, it might cause him some grief. And I guess he doesn't have a lot to make the five point now. It's only really sort of four one combinations. So let's stay back if we can cause him some grief. I would have slot the three there. So it's not ideal, but I'm going to have to go for it now. It's definitely far fewer than the last time. It's only four. I might have miscounted the roll before anyway. It looked like the lows. Eight, eight seemed right to me. It was eight, was it? Yeah. I thought so, yeah. You couldn't talk your math. Okay. Right, so five. I want to cover the one. I've, I've been playing this game as though I'm planning to make a prime and win that race. So that's, that's what I'm going to go for. So now I think maybe I do want to come up because I'd like to get some indirects when he makes the five point, like a six one or five one or five four or something. If I stay back, I won't have the indirects. So let's see if we can come up one and play creeping moves, as they call it. Um, 
could play this in the three, five, six, two. I don't see a need to leave a shot now. I'm way up in the race. Should be able to play this, bring this home. Okay, so the race is still not looking good. So I'd like to make the prime at the front of the back. So this is one I can play here, or I can slot the three. This is still following my priming plan. I, I don't want to come up to the five. I still might cause the three back there. Mm. Yeah, as I was saying, it should be easy to bring home. This is an awkward one. Yeah, I find with DMP games that, uh, as everyone knows, that the game's never over till you've taken your 15th checker off, and that the, you should never lose heart in DMP games, that there's, there's always a twist in the tail somewhere along the line. Yeah. <laughs> so. Probably I, I might hit them indirect and then you'll hit on the one point and jump my prime quite happily. So uh, don't, don't feel it's all over at one stage. Right, okay, so let's let's make another point in my prime. Okay, this point I think I have to start hitting now. One is easy. And coming up again makes it easy for him to play behind me. So let's do something on both sides. Uh, I'd like to clear the seven now, really, but if I can do this, it's, a, it's slightly more flexible actually. I only need double four. This one, my sixes, my sixes play bad. Most of them. So I'll just go for this one, slightly more flexibility. Yeah, leaving leaving just double four can't be bad. Can it? So like we discussed in previous games, just Junior's playing a naked ace game here. So he's keeping it there for the threat. Um, if I just play something like this, um, I might roll some worse numbers later on. So better just to uh, point on him now. Six in, two in, leave it even at the back for big doubles. Whoa. And there we go. Phew. Okay, so it looks like it's hopeless if I run and hopeless if I stay. So maybe I hope he rolls double one and there's a miracle that way. Got away with it. Maybe I'd bore in a little bit, a bit poorly there. Well, this looks as though it's all over now. Well, thank you for the match. Well played. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, maybe we should play a DMP next week. We seem to. You have to drag out the commentary well enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you both very Thank much. You. It's been a, a really good um, match to watch. Um, so everyone in the audience, next Friday, next Friday we have um, Jules taking on Sebastian Wilkinson um, in this series. Um, that'll be Friday evening, 8 o'clock. Um, hope you've enjoyed it and um, thank you all. Okay, cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. I'm just whizzing it through on XG, see how it come out. Yeah, okay, and thank you, Julia, for, for taking thank the time you, and Julia. trouble to host it. Yeah, so thank you for taking part and um, good evening to everyone. See you later. Take care. Bye for now. Bye.